today it is July 20th. We're at the Springfield Airport. So this is where uh, Brian Fisher will be flying out of. He's done all of our aerial work for many, many years and has done a great job. He is my circular weapon. I've got a gut feeling this is gonna be a good year. The farmer is the eternal optimist. We farm together as a family. If we all put our heads together, I don't know what we couldn't achieve. Hopefully we hit 90 bushel. I think we could do it. Just have healthy plants and a good return on investment. One of the worst things about farming is making a decision on planting depth. A quarter of an inch on your depth sometimes, you won't get a stain. As you can see, my pinky ring's empty, so obviously I didn't win. <laughs> With this class of guys that's in Podfathers, I mean, anyone could win. We're here in Cedarville, Ohio. Uh, we have a special guest joining us today. All right, I think that's him. Hey, Andy. How are you? Good, you? Good, fine. What brings you down this way today? Oh, just thought I'd stop around and see what's going on, see how things look. Well, good, I'm glad to have you down here. We'll go look at some crops. Okay, let's do that. All right. Had a little practice, been doing it for a few years. <laughs> 49 years. July 18th, 1972 is when I lost my arm. Two days ago. Yep. Reached into a grain auger for a sample of wheat and went on in when I was two and a half years old. And that's how I lost my arms. They brought a dinner plate in to me during my, when I was in the hospital and that's when I started using my foot to eat. They said it was just like I was supposed to do it that way. Never remember having hands or anything like that. People need to see a good attitude. So full of negativity everywhere you look. It really is. The, the field. Yep. Yep, and then we're gonna take it on down here. I'll try not to get your truck too muddy. I apologize. Ain't gonna hurt me any. Ain't gonna hurt this old truck any. As you can see my steering wheel though, I'm pretty hard on leather strap steering wheels. Especially when my foot's dirty. <laughs> get it on there and with the weight of my leg and grinding it into it and everything. So I'm trying something different, try to run with these boys that can go 150 bushel beans. Mm -hmm. So we did a double diamond, planted it twice, but in a diamond in an X shape. Okay. And they're looking really good, so. All right, are you guys ready to go out? Yeah, let's go. I planned on spraying them a lot more. Like I said, my whole thing is I want a practical. So I don't want to just do it on 10 acres. I want to be able to do it on 1,000 acres. Mm -hmm. Now, is this tilled? Yes. Do you yep. till everything? No, we do have some no-till. So this is actually, I had intercrop in here last year. So some of it's beans on beans, some of it's beans after corn. Okay. See the height's different? Yeah. But you can kind of see the concept of the diamond. I'm really happy with that. We're just trying to get them all to get as many branches as we can. We are at R3. I'm pretty happy with everything so far. Plenty of nitrogen left. Yeah. Modulation on it is excellent. Now what's the difference in that and over here where your beans was? Well, nothing. <laughs> there isn't much difference? It just goes to show though how much nitrogen we had left over from the corn compared to the beans. Beans after beans, the hardest part is getting this part right here, the nodulation to the roots. Okay. Because once, you know, the beans require so much nitrogen to constantly use it, you know, 
they're gonna produce it on their own. They didn't have much to go off of to scavenge from last year. So a lot of people talk about the carbon penalty with corn after corn. Nobody really talks about it with beans after beans. I can raise corn after corn a heck of a lot easier than you can raise beans after beans and have a real strong yield. Now, if you're going after, you know, 60 bushel beans, very doable. But that 80 to 120 bushel range, it's tension to detail and you have to have so many different things go right on your bean side. But on the corn side, we're good. You just kind of, sulfur is the biggest thing that we're looking at right now with these beans because we have the nitrogen mass here for them. So we just want to keep it efficient with the amount of nitrogen. So it's kind of a tale of two fields all in one field. Okay. Copperhead concaves to me are the only way to go. This is a real return on our investment. Use less horsepower, less fuel, and did a better job cleaning. It's second to none. I'm very fortunate that I've been working with Concept Agritech now for four years. We have 12 Concept Agritech plots out right now. Man, this is like drinking water. It does that much for you. Before we get too far into this thing, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Corey Alley with the Corn Warriors logo on the front. I'm scared of Corey now. I'll be honest with you, I think we poked a bear last year, and he's got the right weather this year. I like being in the middle. There's no pressure in the middle, but I could be kind of pushed to the end with the weather we've had this year. Maybe we'll all tie, who knows. Y'all ready to roll? So we're going to the Blue House. It's about a 250 acre field. It's a big old bean field. Big old bean field. Looks like some Corey would farm. All right, guys, let's go. We're going for a surprise. It is to the right. It's on this plant. So we've looked for five bean pods for what, Rob, 10 years? 10 years. Never been able to find one, so I put a bounty on them. Anybody found a five bean pod is worth 100 bucks. Well, this year we found six in one week. There he is. Now, how they found that one, as low as it is, I have no idea. They was looking for a bounty, man. That, fellers, is a five bean pod. Now, the problem with these beans, with the weather we've had, We've got a lot of four bean pods that didn't feel completely out. But man, we have got to figure out a way as farmers not to blame everything on the weather. Farm past them. So Can't there's- farm past God though. No, you're not gonna farm past God by no means, but they're, they're, you know, maybe he gives us enough sense to figure out a way to manage what he gives us. As many of y'all know, Rob has MS. He went through some pretty good pain, was numb, numb basically from the yeah. waist down. I went in the hospital for a weekend, and you know, it seemed like we've had a lot of bad things happen, you know. A lot of good things happen too, but uh, hopefully they're gonna be able to fix pretty bad and turn it into at doable. least tolerable. Doable, yeah. But anyway, we're gonna go down now to our oldest beans. Uh, just wanted to show y'all this, this little jewel here, and uh, probably look for a few insects. I wanna show you. Uh, kind of what we deal with when the beans start going down and lodging. Here in the south, I mean, we're, we're eat up with insects. Um, seems to be a little worse this year than, than past years. Uh, we swept this field actually Tuesday from all the way down there to the tree line to all the way around there at the corn. We stopped nine times and, and did a sweep. They did the same thing on the back, and then we do the, uh, you know, we count them all up and figure what it is the average. And when I say sweet, Rob, you can explain that a little better than I can, but. Yeah, so all of our thresholds are based off of uh, 20, 25 sweep samples. And uh, so we just basically 25 sweeps, we call it a set. Yeah, so we will look at them, and um, 
it's it's a good learning opportunity for to help Lane and Matt gain more confidence uh, while they help me out. Let's do a little looking and see what we get. Look at the nymphs. Yeah. Thanks, man. Nine. You flick them on me every time. Two. Three. This is something we have to deal with, and Perry has to deal with too, that a lot of these other guys don't. We're fixing to clean these dudes up. Time for them to die. I got 44 and one worm. We need to do something pretty bad here. Yes, sir. This has got to be addressed. Yep. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. With the soybeans Terramax, we brought it out and instantly, man, I just couldn't believe the nodulation we had so early. If you haven't heard of them, you better get to know them because their products are here to play. He said that this is like the typical Ohio field. This is probably better than the typical Ohio field where I'm from. Um, it's pretty rough in certain areas. You're right, I should refrain. Typical for this area. For this area. For this area, dirt. You know, you get north of here, it's a whole different mm -hmm. ball game. You get a lot north, that's where all the clay tiles made and there's exactly. a reason why. Exactly. And right now, we're at that fool's gold stage to where you got pod sets coming, you got flowers coming that you hope turn into pods. That's why the rain that we got last week, four inches of rain was such a blessing because, you know, there's nothing that's really gonna tell this plant, hey, I'm in trouble. So we have nice temperatures going for the beans. It's just gonna keep going. So right now it's just my job not to screw it up. One of our biggest problems that we've always fought with is holding the branches together. We can load down the beans. Problem is, you know, all these branches here, they get loaded down with pods. You come to harvest time and they're broke off. And then, you, you know, you're just left with a bean that looks like that. And you go, wait a minute, I was just out here a month ago and that bean did not look like that. Why am I harvesting that? Then you look on the ground and you just see all these stems laying on the ground with pods on them. So if we can keep from that happening, I mean, I think that alone will be a huge yield bump. So normally what I use to, you know, I wanna burn them back. So normally on a normal year, I'd burn these beans back to get more branching. That's what I'm trying to induce. This year though, we went cold and wet early. Mother nature kind of did that for me. So I was kind of at a crossroads. Do I continue burning or do I just let mother nature take care of sending these beans back? because I don't want to stress it too much. You know, there's a borderline there. Are they going to recover or are they not? So to be honest with you, I just kind of let Mother Nature this year take over and let her do her thing. With the diamond and the sunlight, it has made a huge difference. I mean, I can take you, you know, just on right, right up here, which is just 20 inch rows regularly, about half the branching, about half the flower sets. So it goes to show how critical the sunlight piece of this is to the soybean. If we're only getting a few hours of sunlight a day, I want to be able to capitalize on that. So backspin, you know, that's a sulfurous and then potassium. So what we're trying to do that is get a big load of sulfur to try to burn the leaves and the beans back with that, but also feed it some more K through, through, throughout the year. Okay. So hard thing is though with that product, it's got a lot of liquid carbon in it. Liquid carbon's more of a safener to a lot of these products are made to not burn people's bean fields, so you don't get that phone call, hey man, I just applied your product and you burnt my field. Well, kind of a different thinking here, we want to burn. Okay. 
You've got to have enough green matter for photosynthesis, but you also got to stress to be enough to go, uh-oh, better send another shot up from the roots. It gets hard for us because, like I said, we're only making three, three passes. It's a constant learning game of just knowing how far we can push the envelope per load. So, you know, my, my goal with this bean field, I, I'm hoping for around 120 bushel beans. And, you know, we, if we can do it within three, three or four passes, I'll be tickled yeah, down. Yeah, that's, that's great. When were these planted? April 15th. And this is one of the first fields that we planted. I took a picture, posted it on Facebook, and this had five inches of snow right on top of it. Did you have to spot any back in? No. Nope, never been they in to touch it. survived through everything. So it survived through everything. And then uh, after it emerged, had two weeks of really cold weather, frosts and freezes. You know, beans are adaptive, so if they don't get used to warm weather, it won't kill them. Well, luckily, I guess, the beans never knew warm weather. We, once these were in the ground, it cold, stayed cold. So they just figured, hey, this is just life. This is the way it is. This is the way it is, so I'm, I'm happy with it. I was gonna know. say, they look great. Yeah. I'm. I'm very happy. I don't know if I could change a thing. You know, I had plans to be in here more because I finally said, you know, you know, screw it. I'm gonna, gonna just come in here and make a bunch of passes and see what we can do. Just, just see what, what number we can do. Mother Nature didn't allow that for me because we kept getting rain. So why go in and treat it when you're getting sunlight and rain? I mean, I don't have a product in a lineup anywhere that can do that. So you let Mother Nature do her thing and let it go. I'm enjoying a stress-free year so far from, the, from, from Mother Nature. Gonna try to enjoy it. So is this your cornfield over here on the other side of my truck? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of our cornfields here. That's part of my playground. Go check it out. All right. If you wanna watch more and learn more about Andy, go to his YouTube site, The Harmless Farmer. One of the bigger reasons this harvest has gone so much smoother is we got two Fent T9s over there. They've just been pumping the grain. They've done a great job. I've been very pleased with everything. Improve germination in your fields with the Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG. Our spike design with inner rim shoulder firmer seals your seed with a firm vein of soil, providing maximum seed to soil contact. In low moisture conditions, this vein of firmness has the added benefit of wicking moisture up from the ground, creating the ideal environment for maximum germination. For more info and to order a set of Germinator Closing Wheels for your planter, visit farmshopmfg.com. Hey. Hey. I'm not at all trying to tell you what to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who looks at y'all's beans, but Tuesday we swept these by yours. Yeah. And we got four or five stink bugs, and we just went out there a while ago. The Podfather film crew's here and was kind of showing them what we do, and I got 42 in one sweep. That's yeah. Well, I'm just going to let you know. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right. Bye. survey from what we had the other day to what we've got right now. We've got a hatch out of the green stink bugs that has occurred. Uh, we've looked at these enough now that we're fixing to spray them. It's about to have death and destruction out here by the sun up. Let's go find something good. Yeah, let's go find something positive out here. You would think it would stick out like a sore thumb. So another five beaner. Anyway, I told Dan, Melissa, if someday I get to 150 bushels, that I will consider a soybean tattoo. Consider? Consider, well, I guess you're right. I might as well. I said I would get a soybean tattoo like Dan's corn tattoo if I made 150 bushel beans, which is not a big, big feat for some people. Like if you're from Maryland or anywhere up north besides me and Perry. 
I love to use that as an excuse, but it is a good excuse. These are an Agrigold 4620. Uh, they are a Roundup Ready Extend Bean. They're a little later, a little, little, little younger than the beans we were in, uh, where we found a lot of stink bugs and problems. I don't think we'll see the stink bugs quite as bad here. These beans are about two weeks younger, so it'll be interesting to see what we get here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine worms. I'll be No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Did you? I told you what I tell you. If I find one, what's going to happen? Remember that day? I said, if I find the five You said five, you're, you're going to be, be cured, here. yeah. I, I got it. That's three today? So Three today. These guys at Agrigold have really got something going on in their breeding program. I think they should be really proud of the products that they're putting on the market. He said, there's 15,000 people in the U.S. that's got the disease that I've got. He said, the last thing I'm going to do is find a four bean, five bean pod, and if I do, I'm going to be healed. And I'll be dang if he don't come out here today and do that. I'm going to have to give you, that's almost emotional. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. we, I got to take him home with you. Yeah, take him home. You know, winning the, winning the ring's pretty cool, but if we can grow a good, solid, high-yielding bean and, and do it with a positive ROI, and help anybody do the same thing. That that's that's the name of the game. Revitech's been a game changer for us in, in, in high yield soybeans. You know, maintain consistency and that's 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 what's big to us is the consistency. I think it's important for people to realize too that when we talk about the amount of fertility that it takes to produce these beans, that you know you hear it all the time every time you talk to people. It's, well, I can't afford to do that. You know, and I tell people, you can't afford not to do that. Bushels are bushels. If you put enough food out there to get 100 bushels, if everything goes right, you'll get your 100 bushels. Give them hamburgers and french fries, and you take care of that, and they'll take care of you. All these insects that were here in another three weeks are going to be gone, and there ain't got but one place to go. Corn's drying down. Uh, beans are starting to mature, so so these insects have got to have somewhere to go, and they're going to go to that young crop that that was planted, you know, as a salvage mechanism for for what we faced last last month in June when y'all were here last. So everybody's got their own problems and their own solutions, and one of our problems is insects. We had a plan, you know, this field is going to be treated tomorrow, and we'll probably stick with that plan. But as y'all seen earlier in some of the other beans, we. We've got some beans that we've already treated that that the, the get little, little bugs are coming back with a vengeance. So we're going to try to knock them out too. We got a long way to go, and uh, which this one's got a few more two bean pods and, and some of what I've been looking at. But there's some fours there too. So hopefully when y'all come back, uh, you know we'll have something to show you. I've got some pretty decent looking crops. A lot of horsepower left in these. No complaints here. I think that, yeah, you need to burn them back because they're getting ready to take off. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah.